Yeah. Let's, um, what I'm going to do is combine the book and as well as some notes I've handed out to you. And uh, as far as corresponding pages, we'll be in capitulo tres in uh, la página 22. Starting on Bank de Dos, the book, Bank de Dos. So we'll kind of look through both so that we get the vocabulary they want you to have as well as incorporate the notes. So first let's start with La Página Bank de Dos and look at the vocabulario on La Página Bank de Dos. In La Página Bank de Dos, it says building vocabulary. Each chapter is set up in that it starts with a dialogue then a vocabulary section, and then a grammar section. And what we'll typically do is we'll tackle vocabulary and grammar and then go backwards to the dialogue, which is different than how I did it last time, Ruby. I think this will be more effective. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look at the vocabulary. And as you'll see, the first part is dealing with la familia, the family. La familia. La familia. We have el padre, repitan, el padre, el, padre. el, niño. el niño, la muchacha, la muchacha. All right. el, tío. el tío, la señora, la, señora. la, madre. la madre, la niña, la niña. El, hermano. el hermano, la tía, la tía. el hombre, el, hombre. El, hijo. el hijo, la hija, la hija. El, muchacho. el muchacho, la hermana, la hermana. El, señor. el señor, la mujer. La mujer. La mujer. 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 mujer, like hair, mujer. like a blue, like a cow, hair, mujer. La mujer. La mujer. La mujer. All right, and then we'll look at los cuartos de la casa, the rooms of the house. Los cuartos de la casa. Cuarto is a room. Oh, that must be a room. Cuarto is a room. Veinte dos. I know, veinte dos. Veinte dos. Bang, so no, That's not one of our numbers, is it? Plus quattro. Very close. Yeah, though. but it's close it. to quattro. Quattro. Yeah. Okay. Quattro quarto. Quattro quarto. Okay. So you mix the R around with the T, and you get two different words. So okay. in La Casa, we have El Comedor. El Comedor. El Comedor. El Comedor. El Comedor. And we're going to learn here shortly that the verb to eat is comer. So you can see where we get the word dining room, comedor. La cocina. La cocina. It's the kitchen, and it comes from the verb to cook is cocinar. Boy, next week I think we get into AR verbs. I love doing verbs. So, La cocina. Now the bedroom, that one's easy to remember. El dormitorio. Ah, El, El dormitorio. What does that word remind you of? Dormitory. The dorm. And supposedly you Bedrooms. sleep and yeah. study in the dorm. All right, bathroom is el baño. El baño. La sala is the living room. La, La sala. sala. El cuarto. El cuarto. It's just generic for room. And then in different countries, they use different terms for different things. So in Mexico specifically, they will call the bedroom La Recámara. La Recámara. 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 Right. And then, yeah, and then vestibule is El Zaguan. Not a word you come across a lot. Uh, in fact, of all my years of studying Spanish, I'd never heard that word. But well, we had mentioned as a church, so right. But at, at church, you would have it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But in all, but I don't ever, you know, that was never in my, I don't know, never came across it in the literature class. Um, now notice in front of all that vocabulario, there is either an L. Or a law in front of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that is because the L and the law are your definite articles, which translate into English as 
the, T-H-E, the table, the chair, the teacher, the friend, okay? But in English, we just say the woman, the man, the children. Does it matter? Because we don't have, in English, masculine words and feminine words. But in Spanish, we have words that are masculine, we have words that are feminine. And so, so your articles, masculine? right, so if you would grab this piece of paper that I gave you, it says Estructuras de la Lengua, language structures, it's got mm -hmm. a back of a woman's head on it, um, we'll go from here because it gives us good, you know, it gives you notes broken down, written out well for you, I think that explains it nicely. So, in Spanish, things as well as people. Okay, it might not just be people. It would be tables and cars and different animals. It will either be feminine or masculine. So, on the masculine side, el chico es grande. The boy is big. El cuaderno es grande. The notebook is large. Feminine nouns, la chica es grande. The girl is big. La pluma es grande. The pen is large. Okay? Pluma is another way for pen, bolígrafo, different, different words. Why would pen be feminine? Then, why are words feminine or, or masculine? Because we say so. It's just, yeah. Okay. Now, let, let's look at some of the rules, all right? L means the before masculine noun and the masculine definite article. La is the before feminine noun, and it is the feminine definite article. Usually, masculine nouns end in O. Feminine <laughs> nouns often end in A. A lot of your feminine nouns, you also have endings like dad, sion, and sion. Like, for example, la ciudad means the city. It's feminine. Okay, if it ends in dad, it's feminine. Just remember, dad married a girl. All right? La canción means a song. It's feminine. It's, it's all on there for you. La lección, the lesson. La nación, the nation. La televisión. So words that end in a or dad or sion or sion are feminine. The, okay, so Typically. That's interesting. And then there are just words that you just memorize. <laughs> and so when you get vocabulary, if it comes with a definite, and we're going to look at indefinite articles too, which means a, you know, a table versus the table, learn it with your article. Okay. Don't learn just Cruz, cross, learn la cruz. Don't learn just Biblia, learn la Biblia. And if you learn it with the article, then you know from the very get-go this guy is feminine or masculine. Why do you need to know that? Because also when you start describing it with an adjective, it's got to agree. So you want to know. Um, now there's some that you just gotta you just gotta memorize. For example, avión is a plane. It's el avión, el coche, the car, el examen. Um, most of the time, when words deal with people like dad, man, mister, they're gonna be masculine. The word woman it ends in r, but it's dealing with woman, so it'll be feminine. So some of those are easy to know. So let's just look at some of these words they have listed under numero dos and say them together. El avión. El avión. El coche. El coche. El examen. El hombre. El hotel. El lápiz. El lápiz. El padre. El padre. El papel. El papel. El profesor. El profesor. But if it was a female, it would be la profesora. Right. Okay. Okay. El reloj. El reloj. El reloj. It's a watch or a clock. El reloj. El reloj. Just remember Father Time. You know, you know the the Christmas cartoon. I'm stuck on how to pronounce the reloj. 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 Kind of like the J is not even there. Just reloj. All right. Like J-Lo, but reloj. 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 All right. El tren. 
and yeah, change. Right. And a lot of these words, even though they're out of a different book, they're going to be verb words that you have in this textbook you're using. So it all kind of went together nicely. All right, <clears throat> street is la calle. La calle. All right, la classe. La frase. La frase. La frase. La madre. La madre. La mujer. La mujer. La noche. La noche. And then, if you have a series, you're listing things. You still put the definite article before each noun in a series. El padre y la madre. El hombre y la mujer. So the, ma the father and the mother of Billy Bob went on the trip, right? God made man and God made woman. El hombre y la mujer. So you, you would put it in front of each noun in a list. Now, <clears throat> when you are talking about, on the back page, when you are talking about Mr. Gomez, you would use the L, the article, in front of it. It does not translate into English, but in Spanish it's there. So if we say, Mr. Gomez listens to the program every day, we would say, El Señor Gomez. Now, we don't translate that into the Mr. Gomez, but it is just present. The use of definite articles in Spanish is much greater than we use them in English. And like I said, like a lot of times if it's a concept, like in literature, Spanish literature is very focused on la muerte. It's one of the big topics in literature and poems, okay, death. And so this could be literally the death of my father saddened me, or this could just be Death, like death has lost its sting for the Christian. So sometimes it's literally translated, sometimes it's not, but it's definitely used a whole lot more in Spanish than we ever use them in English. So you'll see them a lot. And it's called definite articles because it's talking about a specific thing, the table, the chair, the man. All right, so if I were saying, though, t I'm, I'm walking up to Mr. Gomez, okay, this is Mr. Gomez, and I say, hey there, Mr. Gomez, I'd say, buenos dias, Senor Gomez, I wouldn't say L. I would not say hello and put the article. You would just say, senor, senora, senorita. But if you're talking about him, you're writing about him, Mr. Gomez came to church today and brought three of his neighbors. Yay. Okay, then we'd say, El Senor Gomez. Same thing. La Señorita Molina estudia el idioma y el mapa. Mrs. Miss Molina studies the language and the map. But if I'm speaking directly to her, I say, Hola, Señorita Molina. Hey, Miss Melita Molina, how are you? Okay. <clears throat> and so that's what those rules say. El or la is used before a title when talking about the person but you admit it when you're directly talking to the title person. And it's the same thing for any title. If we're talking about Dr. Russell, we'd say, El Dr. Russell es un buen maestro. He's a good teacher. But if I'm saying, hey, Dr. Russell, hola, Dr. Russell, okay? So, now, there's always, you know, there's always people in every group that just have to break the rules. They just have to be the odd man out. They just have to get on your last nerve. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, same thing in Spanish grammar. There's always those little words that don't want to play by the rules. And for those, you must do one thing. Memorize them. No getting around it. For example, we've already, you've already encountered this. You've memorized it already without knowing it. Los días de la semana, the days of the week. Guess what? It's los días. It's el día. It's an oddball. It ends in A, but it's masculine. We're, we'll get to this. That's the plural. But it's masculine. It ends in A. But remember, oh, okay. but just remember, God made the days. Okay? Just think about that. If you come up with a little 
weird things like that to memorize stuff, that, that's helpful. Um, uh, you lost me there. Los Dias. Yeah, we're going to get to it in a minute. It's oh. plural. The days. Mm -hmm. Los is plural. I got it in myself. El dia. <laughs> the day. Este es el dia. Que el Señor ha hecho. This is the day the Lord has made. All right, map is another one. El mapa. The map. Mapa. Just remember, guys hate to follow maps. <laughs> right? I, yeah. <laughs> El idioma, the language. God confused the language of the people at the Tower of Babel. El programa, he made the program. Got it. Uh, but la mano, it's mano means hand, but it's la mano. Um, and la radio, it ends in O, but we say la radio. So if you can kind of come up with funny little ways, or maybe just one of these people can just memorize it. So Matt, we call those masculine exceptions, right? Because they're exceptions to the rule that right. we tell. Yeah, they're just exceptions. And there's, there's, there's exceptions to the rule, and you just have to memorize them. Now, in this, um, <clears throat> We won't be weighing heavily on those weird oddball words, okay? I mean, I want you to know padre is el padre, and, and for the basics, I want you to understand masculine and feminine, so in some form or fashion, I'll quiz that, but this is not like a you know 400 level college course that you have to know all the finer points of the Spanish language, but I'm just showing you um, when you see things after I tell you that most words that end in A are feminine, then you go, yeah, but what about they? It's an oddball. He's an exception to the rule. All right, more uses of L and law and admissions of L and law. Sometimes it's put in, um, <clears throat> for example, when we're talking about avenida and calle, avenue and street. When we identify them by name or number, you use the definite article. For example, la escuela está entre La Avenida Arcos y la Calle Diez. The school is between Arcos Avenue and 10th Street. Also, when we talk about languages, if I'm talking about, um, you'll see it a lot. Um, In, in the language lab, they're listening to French, Spanish, and English. It would be El Espanol, El Inglés, El Francés. But behind certain prepositions, they, they omit it. Now, I'm not going to get all crazy on you on that, because that's a, that's a finer point of grammar. But I'm just showing you um, that their use of definite articles is a little different than our use. Okay. We only use it when we want to say the, and they have some extra rules. So sometimes you'll see it, but if I just say, like, um, she's reading Spanish in Spanish class, ella lee en español en la clase de español. We don't use it in front of those, and after those prepositions, in and of. So go back to La Pagina Bank de Dos and look. Mm -hmm. I'm going to holler out one of the vocabulary words. You tell me, is it masculine or feminine? Mm -hmm. And La Pagina Bank de Dos, and back in your book, we're going to hop back to the Libro. Okay. All right. Saguan. Masculino or feminina? Saguan. Zaguan. Is that masculino or feminina? Masculine. Masculino. It's El Saquan. Right, the vestibule. How about comedor? Comedor. Masculine. Masculine. Hermana. Feminine. Tia. Feminine. Tio. Masculine. Hombre. Masculine. Padre. Masculine. Okay. Uh, Puerto. Masculine. Casa. Feminine. 
Uh, Senora. Feminine. 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 All right. Now, what happens though when we have more than one and we need to make them plural? Hmm. All right. <clears throat> If you look over on the Pahina Bank, they quadro under point numero tres. The plural of L is los. The plural of la is so we have L, la, los, las. So let's take a word. El libro, los libros, la chica, the girl, las chicas, the girls. Now, if a word ends in a vowel, we do exactly what we do in English. You just add a S. You lost me here. You got the book. Uh-huh. The books. Los the books. Okay. The book. Yeah, the plural of the book is yeah, I just did the books. Here. I just did a masculine word, a feminine word, singular, plural. Oh, okay. okay. I'm trying to put Libro with Chica. I'm Sorry. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see around you there. And I was, Sorry. I got all caught up here. <clears throat> Now, what do we do in English if a word ends in. Alright. Um, Alright, so if we have coche, for example, which is a what? Coche's car. Uh-huh. Would that be L or La? Uh, L. It's L coche. How would we make it plural? Los. 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 And how do I do this? Add an S. Yeah. It ends in a vowel, just add an S. Oh, okay. 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 Alright, let's do another one. Mesa means table. Mm -hmm. Alright, would that be L or La? La. La Mesa. Mm -hmm. so remember, Mom sets the table most of the time. And now make it plural. La, 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 las Mesa. 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 Good. Uh, let's do, um, dog, Pharaoh. Would it be our La? Uh, no. It's either El, La, Los, or La. El Pero. El Pero. And now so let's make it, it plural. It would be Los. Los no. Peros. Quaderno. Notebook. Quaderno. L. L. Quaderno. And how do I make it plural? <coughs> Los. Los. Quaderno. Just add an S. Now, what happens if we have la mujer? Front row, doesn't end in a vowel. We simply add yes. 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 Mujeres. Oh, oh wow. Las mujeres. So like we do in English a little bit. Yeah, I was trying to think a minute ago. We do that with some words in English, but not all. H. Um, like churches. Right. Like churches. Singular. La mujer. La mujer. Plural, hey. las mujeres. Las mujeres. All right. How about this one? Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Ciudad City. Remember the words that end in dad were what? Feminine. Feminine. Remember? Dad, yeah. married a girl. Yeah. Dad, married a girl. So it's la. La, ciudad. So let's make it plural. Las. Las 
you God thanks. thanks. It's very good. Yep. Hey, and, and it's worse in English because think about it. We do complete spelling changes. His wife, but the wives. Right? So, I mean, we have all kinds of Flashbacks when I worked at Miniland. <laughs> <laughs> so I when I first got married, I did not want to trouble crap me up, but she didn't even call me that. I just like, well, it's Woo! Let's do one more and then we'll take our break and give you time to kind of like, you know, digest, digest it all. <laughs> All right, what about the comedor? We eat dinner in the dining room, the comedor, and we said the comedor was masculine or feminine? Masculine. It's right. Uh huh. El comedor. Now let's make it plural. The rich have. Los comedores. Los comedores. Very, very good. Excellent. So let's just stop there. Kind of digest that. Because today we're going to deal with all the vocabulary with direct and indirect. And then next week we'll look at some of the common verbs that we use with it as we read through the, you know, the dialogue. And then the following week I'll talk to you about how you conjugate verbs. But I don't want to hit you with all that one time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little overwhelming. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Actually, I understand this a little bit better than I did the other stuff. <laughs> right, so we'll take a yep, take cinco minutos. Let's take five and uh, <clears throat> stretch your legs. I'm oh, freezing in here. They have the air conditioner on. I know. Good. <laughs> this is where I got lost. I took this. I'm taking this class again because I got lost last semester. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, take this book out of here. Yeah. I got a book. seven a.m. class. Really a good class. Yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, his encounter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I took one at the church of Spanish, but uh, I was taught by a guy from Ecuador. Yeah. And his teaching tactic is a whole lot different than her. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I like the way she teaches. Yeah. I, uh, I was in Panama, but that was many moons ago in the military, you know, and mm -hmm. I thought I knew a little Spanish. Then I get in here and she started correcting me. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I need to wipe all that out of my head. Right, right, All that out of my head. I thought I knew. <laughs>
you guys have a whole week in between. And if it's not practice every day, everything that I'll teach today can be on one tomorrow. Yeah. I'm an old dude, so so I'm, a, I'm almost 60 years old. Yeah. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You look like you're like 24. No, I'm sick. I'll be 60 next no year. No way. Yes. 60 years old next year. Uh-uh. Yeah. I thought you were younger than me. No, I'll be 60 years old next year. I'll be, I'll be 46 in yeah. a month. So 60. I was like, no, I was be like, I'm saying, 60, I'm like, ugh. No. Yeah. <laughs> what I've been doing is I've been trying to, I've been studying and stuff, and I have a, someone that worked with me in a week and study, and they have been doing practice and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, yeah. I'm, so I have to study, you know, I try to yeah. be, I, I go to something, my wife knows a little Spanish, my daughter, they help me out, try to get good, but they did yeah. for like years, Just a long time, time ago. Just call it out and yeah. keep practicing it, but the big thing is each day, little bits each day, don't wait in gaps of time right. in between, because like once you get behind, you know, um, see, Reuben got, last year, he had hurt his foot. Right. And it's when he was wearing the boot and stuff, and he was out for a while. Right. Well, he got behind, and it was just like he never could get back up. And, um, <laughs> but this way, I'm, I'm like, whoop, like, this stuff, I'm like, okay. I'm going along, I see some of it. The claw and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And just the more you are in it and hear it, it, it starts, it, right. it makes more sense. Cause for someone who's never had a Spanish class, a French class, or anything, and they walk into a language class, it's like, right. Thank yeah. you. Before, I guess, before 2021, right? We, we went over last night on the book and stuff like that. Yeah, and you can go online and listen to words, diction, a word dictionary.com, and places that have the Spanish, a lot of them have the little sign for the, um, the, the listening, right. you can listen to words. She has a book on tape, too. You can go online, there's free stuff. I mean, you can go on to, um, you know, you can go listen to the Spanish alphabet or listen to Spanish greetings. A lot of people put their stuff up on YouTube and stuff. There's a ton of freebies. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had this resource just when I was like teaching public yeah. school. It would have been nice. So it's actually like cold to the touch. It looks like really cold. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm holding up. Man, I tell you, it's a little rough, but I'm still got it's a rough ride, man. I still got a little grip left. Hey, it's a rough ride. Fingernails have broken off, but I'm still hanging on. It's making a little more sense to me. We had this lady at our church. She was like, just give me a book and I'll help you. And she stopped coming to church. <laughs> so I thought I was going to be down the road a little bit. You know, I could, have, you know, coast a little bit. I like to go coasting. <laughs> I, got a, I got a, a, a church member from Panama and he's he, Extremely fluent in it, but it's just hard to catch him and everything like that. And he keeps, yeah, okay, I, I, you know, I'll help you, help you. I can't, I can't catch up with you. And see, and that's the way she was. <laughs> she was uh, from Puerto Rico, you know. Right? But you know, you just gave me another thought because one of my neighbors, I need to give him because he's from Panama. He's a retired colonel, you know. And he's, yeah. I mean, he's a good guy. He probably would. He might have the time and the patience to sit down and try to it. I don't know if it's wife and daughters speak it or not. Mm -hmm. I know they're from the States, you know. But. Mm -hmm. All right, let's practice a little bit more changing some <laughs> things into the plural. Um, and then we'll talk about how to say the indefinite articles. I have a book instead of the book. And it's going to follow the same rule, so it, it, it's not, not too hard to grasp. All right, so let's look on La Pajina, Bangbe y Cinco. La página 25, 25, at the top, there's exercise 2B, do you see it at the top? Mm -hmm. Let's go through and make Lo those oh. words plural. Alright, number uno, 
La Calle, the street, let's make it streets. What would that be? Las Calles. Las Calles. Simply add what? The S. Okay. Numero dos, the dining room becomes the dining rooms would be what? Adding S again. Uh, los. Los. Los Comedores. Come Dores. Very good. Dores. And that adds ES, correct? Because it ends in a consonant. All right, El Corto. What is El Corto? The room. Let's make it the rooms and it becomes Los Cortos. Cortos. Just add a SA. Right. Cuatro, el señor, the gentleman. Let's make it plural. The gentleman, plural, would be? Los, los, los señores. Señor, eggs, add a? Yes. 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 What about numero cinco? What is a la recamera? What is a recamera? Kim? Kim? No. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's, a, in that's the best. A comma or? is a bed. Oh, and a recamera is a bedroom in what country specifically? Mexico. 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 So okay. let's make it the bedrooms would become las re camaras. Just add a S. S. All right. What was the other word for bedroom? Uh, Say in Spain uh, or another country. Dormitorio. Dormitorio. So it would be el dormitorio. How would it be plural? Los Dormitorios, just add a S. Very good. All right, numero seis. ¿Qué es la cocina? What's a cocina? Kitchen. Kitchen. Kitchen, let's make it plural. Las cocinas. Las cocinas. All right. Madre is who? Woman. The mother. The mother. La madre. La madre is the mother. Let's make it mamas, mothers, las. Las madres. Madres. Very good. How about padre? Who is the padre? The father. Let's make it plural. Los. Los, los padres. La sala. What is la sala? Living room. Living room. Let's make it plural. Las. Las salas. Salas. Just add an S. Very good. Who is la hija? The daughter. The daughter. Let's make it plural and becomes las, las, las hijas. hijas. All right. What is la ciudad? La ciudad. La ciudad. La ciudad Los Angeles. La ciudad Nueva York. City. 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 And we'll make it plural becomes La Ciudades. All right. C U D A S E S. E -S. And then in this consonant, add E S. Dose. El año. What is El año? The year. The year. Make it plural. Los. 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 And who is La Mujer? The woman. the woman. Let's make it plural. Las mujeres. El hombre. Who's el hombre? The man. Make it plural. Uh, los, los hombres. Hombres. And finalmente, who is el tío? El tío, the uncle. Uncle, the and make it plural. <laughs> los, uh, los tíos. Tíos. Very good. Muy bien. Excelente. All right. <clears throat> now, what if we want to say, though, Mr. Adams is a businessman, not the businessman, but he is a businessman, or I have a spare key, I have a cat, or she has some books to give me, then we need to use the indefinite article. All right, so look with me, if you will. Over on your new sheet, the next sheet I gave you, it says uses of unos and unas. They are what we call indefinite articles. For example, if I say I have a book, it's indefinite as to what kind it is, right? It's just very general, a book. <clears throat> so 
like everything else in Spanish, there's a singular and a plural, a feminine and a masculine. These are in the back. Oh, they are? Um, we did this exercise. Where am I? Um, I'm trying to do it upside down. I don't know what I'm doing. This exercise is what we did or and I wrote it on the board, but all your answers are in your back of your book. Okay. The check, so just, yeah. <laughs> All right, so if I want to say a book, I say un libro, all right, that's masculine, un is masculine. I have a house, that would be una casa, because casa is feminine. Now, in English, what is the plural of a? In English? Yeah, we say some. I have a book, he has some books. Oh, yeah. Okay? In Spanish, it's real easy. It's just unos libros, some. There are some new houses on the street, unas casas. So your four forms of the indefinite is un, una, unos, unas. Un, un means a book. Right. A book. Un and una mean a. Unos and unas mean some, as in a few. Some girls are studying Spanish. Some boys are studying Latin. Okay, but I'm confused again. <laughs> okay. Un is one, like a book. Mm -hmm. Right, as in a, an, or one. Like if I say, ¿Cuántos libros tienes? How many books do you have? And you hold up your only book and you go, Tango un libro. I have one, one book. book. So a or an. Okay, I'm still, where are you on the sheet? Uh, where it says definite, indefinite articles, no. and it's at the very top. So uno can mean many books? Few. Mm -hmm. Some. Few? It means some. some. Yeah. Like, if you want to say, some folks like football, or some books are fun, so, some are boring. Unos libros son divertidos. Unos libros son aburridos. So is it going to be un or unos when it comes to books? It will finish with the If it's masculine, it will be un if it's singular, unos if it's plural. If it's feminine, it will be, it will be una, una, and if it's plural, it will be unas. Okay. But going back to the word again, it's libro is masculine. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's why that mm -hmm. twisted up there. So if it's, sometimes we'll see unos pocos, pocos means a little, so that used together means some few. What is that? Unos pocos. Unos pocos. Some few? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense though. Like, unos pocos dulces. Um, like, <laughs> would you, would you like a few little handies? It, 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 we don't really use that expression. In we English. wouldn't use those two words no, but together. But, you'll some speak, few? but you use it in Spanish. Okay. I but yeah, don't don't like a little candy. Yeah, right. And it's always used with the unos with it. But let's okay. Let let's look at the exercise. And and today everything I'm going to ask you, like what book would they do they want? You're going to tell me 
an interesting one? Or what dictionary is it? An interesting one. Or what magazine do you wish for? An interesting one. Everything's going to be interesante, okay? So let's say that word, interesante. Interesante. All right, so if I asked you, que diccionario es? What dictionary is it? You're going to tell me? Interesting. A interesting dictionary. Un diccionario interesante. Un mm. So mm, we're going to fill in these blanks here. You, you don't have to. We can just do this orally. In my case, I need to. K revista de Seon. What magazine would they like? What indefinite article do I put in front of revista? Revista. La. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna say a interest an interesting magazine. A, an interesting magazine. Oh, una, una revista interesante. Okay, una. Una revista. Oh, una revista. Because revista is magazine. Magazine. feminine, right? Una revista. Yeah. Una revista. So, una revista interesante. 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 ¿Qué profesor necesitan? What professor do they need? They need an interesting teacher. They need an, uh, an interesting professor. So would professor be un or una? Un. Un professor. Interesante. ¿Qué periódico prefieren? What newspaper do they prefer? Un. Un periódico interesante. All right. ¿Qué ciudad visitan? What city are they visiting? Una. Una ciudad interesante. ¿Qué lección estudian? What lesson are they studying? Uh, una. Una lección interesante. Right. ¿Qué pensión prefieren? Uh, here it's probably referring to a boarding house or a hostel. In Spain, uh, college students travel and stay in hostels. It's, mm -hmm. it's you know like a boarding house. It also can mean pension, like your monthly pay. But um, it is <clears throat> so it's una. But remember that yeah, the words that end in sion with s i o n, c i o n, and dot are feminine. So una pension interesante. So that had to be referring to a boarding house because you don't have an interesting monthly payment or pension. Um, K programa. Now, ah, here comes the irregular. Oh. This is the, it's masculine, so it's un. Yeah, it's un oh, programa. Okay. Yeah, that one's, that one's sneaky. Um, what about K dia ace? What day is it? It's an interesting day. Un dia interesante. Mm. What about K canción escuchan? What song are they listening to? Una. Una canción. Interesante. All right. Say that number eight again, please. Number ocho. Un. It's un programa because it's it's a, it's an irregular one. It's the irregular on this sheet right here. It's if you go down to number two on the rules. On okay. the back side, it's it's one of the one of the it's a it's a masculine exception. Which you? On on the one with the lady with the back. Oh, hair. okay, okay. That okay. one right there. And I see number two. The rules. Yeah. El programa is a masculine noun. Oh, okay. It's the okay. exception. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Here. 
Nothing helps me. No, the ink on that one's about kaput. Oh, you know what? I have another one in here. Oh, and my basura. Oh, so it would be El Un um, Casa. No, 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 no. A house. A house. Mm -hmm. Un Casa. Una Casa, because it's feminine. Una Casa. Una Casa. Now tell me it's the house. The house on the corner. Mm. House. What's your definite article? Mm hmm. It's just, that's just a house. Right, now tell me this one. The house would be a definite or article. Or not. No. Mm -mm. The, the, the. El casa. La casa. La casa. Remember casa is a, a female. Feminine. Feminine. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm trying to switch it up. Okay, it's not la, it's not L. It's feminine. It's la, 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 la. Still, get that out of my head. Mm-hmm. All right. Now make it plural. Some houses. Laos. Unas. Unas. I'm, I'm totally confused now. Un, unas. Unas casas. casas. And back to the definite article. Casa. Las, yes, las casas, right? Uh -huh. And then a definite plural would be las casas. Las. Las. Okay, I don't know what I did. Because all right, you can sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Because you have your definite articles, which are the in English. In English, the definite article is the, okay. which is L or la. And so you have four choices L, la, los, las. It will be one of those four. It will be first you got to figure out is it masculine or feminine, singular, singular or plural. All right? And then your indefinite articles, like in English, a or an, or plural is some. We have either un or una, or the plural is unos and unas. Okay? All this is the same information you have in the book, on the handouts. I'm just trying to show it to you in different formats. Alright, give me one of your vocab words from today. Give me a vocab word. Lexion. Lexion. Is that one of the ones we have today? Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. Give me one from, yeah, here. So uh, we practice this. Cochina. 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 Okay. Cochina. Kitchen. Alright. So we want to say a kitchen, the kitchen, some kitchens, <laughs> some kitchens are not as clean as others, and the kitchen, oh, the kitchens, that word looks weird when you write it in English. It does. You know what I mean? Do you ever write, write a word in English and then you look at it and you go, <sighs> my brain's going. Okay. All right. So, is kitch, is cocina masculine or feminine? Uh, feminine. It's feminine. Because it ends in A, not because the women belong in the kitchen. Yeah, so just, I was just, thinking just, thing. just so you know. Do what I was thinking. Right. Anyway. Just, just so <laughs> You got me, but you probably seen one of them. Like, hmm, All right, how do we say a kitchen? La. La. A, 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 a,
Some kitchens need some cleaning. Unas, some. Unas. Unas. Cocinas. Cocinas. And the kitchens in the mansion are beautiful. Has, he, has more one, he has more than one kitchen. Las. 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 Cocinas. Oh, I had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, some we go with cook when you use the word some, mm -hmm. and then then you use it plural again. You say kitchens, and the English language some is more than one. Right. And then we use it in the other term down the bottom. It's kitchens is still more than one. Yeah. So, but you use unas because how else would you express in English a? Oh. Oh. Because if I was talking about cars, mm -hmm. some cars have airbags. Okay. okay. And I don't want to say a car has airbags. I want to say some cars. Some car. okay. well, in Spanish, we'd express it with unos coches. TNN. A false of AI. And then use it. What about down the bottom? The kitchen, the cars. You say some cars have airbags, then you say the cars has airbags. But the car would be a car, a specific car. Right. I saw the car come through the neighborhood last night. You're talking about this guy, you think he's, he's breaking in houses. I saw the car, El Coche. See, it, again, it's, it's, it's the same difference between whether you want to express definite article or indefinite article. I think that's where I got. Okay. And definitely, and definitely made you this. The teacher said we have to keep a notebook. And we're referring to a very specific teacher, not just any teacher out in the world. Right? Right? The teacher. You know which one we're talking about. It's being definitive. The book says that. Words are either masculine or feminine. <clears throat> and it's referring to a certain book. But if I say something very general, hey, I have a book on that subject. I'm not giving you specifics, am I? I'm just saying I have a book. So tonight when you, and this week, when you practice, on the bottom of La Pagina Bainte Cuatro, the bottom of page 24, there's exercise dos a. And you're going to write out the sentences, filling in with the correct article. Some are definite, some are indefinite. You have to read it to see which one. So for example, they did the first one for you. It's the Familia Adams vive in Nueva York. So that's a definite The Adams of. family lives in New York. So it's not a Adams family. It's the Adams family. Mm -hmm. So family is feminine, so it would be what? La, La familia. familia Adams vive in Nueva York. And some of them have two. Now, part of your assignment is to go ahead and go back to page 21 and read through the dialogue that goes from page 21 through 22. And it gives the English on the side. <clears throat> and these sentences are from taken from that dialogue, but I would like you to be able to Take what we're learning today with the vocabulary and say, hey, is this feminine? Is this masculine? Is it singular? Is it plural? Is it asking me for a definite or an indefinite? And then after you write it out, you can check your work in the back of the book because they have the answer keys for you.
And then you're going to do over on the top of Bank Fate E Single, the same exercise we did, or we just did it in class practice, and I wrote them on the board. If you copy them off the board, do them again. This time on your own and see if you can get them. So that's what you're going to do. Two written exercises, A and B, and then go read through the dialogue and pre-read it to get familiar with what's there. And then next week we'll come back and we will talk about more about the articles and introduce some verbs that were used in there. So 25B, <clears throat> right? 24A, 25B, and read over the dialogue. Right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to look at El Versículo de la Semana, the verse of the Greek. The dialogue is on 21, right? Eh? 21 to 22. It, it oh. goes over to the next, to the next page. Cool. Hmm. Scripture. Um, these are scriptures we should know, like in English, right on top of our heads. So, um, in in English, what does Romans three twenty three say? And all have all, all, all sin and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, does this say all of that in those exact words? No. Now, if I want to, this is what this verse says. Um, you know, it says everyone. For all have sinned, pay car on. Pay car is to sin. All right? Uh, that's where we get the, um, the noun. I'm going to put myself on that one. Okay. Pecado is sin, as in a noun. Okay? Pay car is to sin. All right? And so it says all sinned and Alcansar is to to rise up to to achieve, and it says, and they didn't achieve. So, in other words, fell everyone short. falls short of. Now, so what I'm trying to show you is there's no word that says fall, and there's no word that says short. But when you put that whole thing together, that's what this verse means. Everyone sin and, and is falling short of the so word no of God. No outcomes. No alcanson, and they don't. They reach. did not achieve. They don't reach. achieve the glory of God. We all fall short. So, especially when we're learning Bible, it, it doesn't always translate word for word. And this just happens to be where the NASB, the, the Biblia de las Americas expresses it. If you go to Bible Gateway, did you know on Bible Gateway, you can pull down and look at the, the, the verses in any language you want? And you can add a parallel. So when I'm when I'm studying and I'm writing Bible studies, I'll go pull it up in, in, in the NASB, and then I'll put the parallel and I'll look at the King James, and I'll pull up the, the Hebrew Bible. I love to read the Hebrew Bible. Then I'll bring it up in the Amplified, and then I can see it in Spanish. I can have six translations. It's really cool. 
So it has all the Spanish ones there. And so you can look in the different Spanish ones and see how it varies. You said so, BibleGateway.com? Yeah, Bible Gateway. It's great. It's, it's one of the tools I use all the time. Um, writing, you know, Bible study sermons, cut and paste from there. It's awesome. And you can go, oh, and you can, you can pull, down, pull down a passage and listen to it in Spanish mm -hmm. on Bible Gateway. Yeah. Sweet. So let's say our verse together. Por cuanto? Por cuanto? Todos. Todos. Hey, Caron. Hey, Caron. Y no alcanzan. Y no alcanzan. La gloria. La gloria. De Dios. De Dios. Por cuanto todos. Por cuanto todos pecaron, y no alcanzan, y no alcanzan la, gloria la gloria de Dios. De Dios. Mm. <laughs> okay, um, let's have a little practice then with Bible drills because they're fun, right? Um, Let's see. Look up. Marcos. Uh, capítulo 9. Versículo 33. San Marcos. Capítulo 9. Versículo 33. Somebody tell me where I am. Marcos, Marcos the alone the web, eh? Chapter Versi 9, verse 23. Marcos, right. San Marcos, the web, eh? Okay, versículo. The web, eh? What did you say? Trinket, 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 to and versículo is chapter. I just want to put those in my vocabulary. Okay. All right. What does that say, uh, Carlos? Uh, it says, uh, y llegaron. Llegaron? Yeah. Llegaron? Llegaron. Ah, ca, Mm-hmm. Y estando ya en la casa les preg preguntaba preguntando uh, qué 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 discutéis discutéis por el camino. Okay. They arrived. Llegar is they arrived. Past tense. So. Look at that word. It, it starts with the double what? L. L. And we pronounce it yeah. 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 Yay, yeah. Garon. Like, yeah. yay, yay, Garon. They arrived. Y estando ya en la casa, they were already in the house. <clears throat> and he, and they, he was asking them, what were you discussing? On the road. Hmm. Those who discuss. Yeah, these would say is. This is Camino is road? Camino is road or way or path. Right. Remember one of the verses we learned? Jesus said, Jesus dijo, Yo soy el camino. Yes. I am the way, la verdad, the truth, y la vida, and the life. La vida is what? Life? La vida. La vida. You remember that, that song, La Vida Loca? Uh-huh. You know, it's on Shrek. <laughs> it's at the end of the movie, Shrek. And they're all dancing. Uh, so it's the life. La Vida, right. The so when, when Jesus says, Yo soy la vida, I'm the life. Um, el Camino, on the literally the road, the way, the path. It can mean roadway or path. My trunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yo soy la vida, el camino y la verdad, the truth. 
And what do we call this law and L? They're definite articles. Right. And it's important because Jesus did not say, I am una or un camino. Did he? Many ways. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the L way. El Camino. Seems like grammar, Bible, and everything all at one time. Just <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Get all excited. And for dad is true. For God. God. For God. And if I ask you uh, as a question at the end, I'll say, um, "La prueba es muy fácil." For that, because it's easy, isn't it? So if I make it like a question and I, I, I make it like this. Or and I say without the law, but just but for that, it's like saying, isn't it really? Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, just truth, huh? right? Yeah. Right, true. Am I right? Yeah. Um, you say so. You so, todos, <laughs> todos, todos tienen una A en la prueba, for that. Everybody gets is getting an A on their test, right? See, ah, see, for that, for that. <laughs> for that. All right, so for next week, study, 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 study those articles, definite and indefinite. So you have the book to read through, and then you have the handouts and notes that I gave you, and read through the dialogo. Maybe go through and read that first, and then go back and do the written. Um, but, you know, again, what you turn into me on Thursday, you show it, you get a grade. But if you only do your homework next Wednesday or Tuesday, but you don't look at it any other day in between, it's not gonna work. <laughs> you're going to get behind. So even after you finish the so-called written stuff that you're going to show me for points, each and every day, you know, go back to those study habits that I gave you at the beginning. And, and if, if you're one of these people are very visual, use colored markers. Make flashcards. Um, you know, I used to write my words on a, on a piece of paper, and I'd have the Spanish here, El Camino, El Camino, and I would write each one two or three times, and next to it I'd write the road, the road, you know, and then I would fold my paper in half, mm -hmm. quiz myself, and um, <clears throat> You know, I'd make my own, I'd make up tests, like as if I were the teacher and I would write a test and see if I could take my own test. I used to do that with every subject, but uh, I just started doing that in kindergarten because I just wanted to teach. So, <laughs> I, I love to make up tests. <laughs> so, but whatever it takes for you that helps you to memorize, do it. And if you have questions in the week, as long as you call me before 8 at night, you got my number. All right, so, por favor, in English, in English, Reuben, do you want to like close this in prayer? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. And we come giving you honor, glory, and praise. Amen. We're all belongs to you, Lord. We thank you for our instructor, Father God, and we pray that you continue to pour into her as she pours into your people, Father God. Thank you for giving us a heart to learn of you, that we may go out and minister, Father God, and to do and to be that which is pleasing in your sight, Father God.